Hi, welcome back to the Cuzzy Sound Channel. In part 17 in the series, all about my Project 12 DIY modular analog synthesizer. In this video, I'm going to show you how I put together the replacement op amp saw wave uh, VCO for the one that's in my Optivator module. Now, the original one is a really simple design and yeah, it works. But this design I've found is it's got a lot more control on the CV side of things. Um, so it's it's kind of it's a little easier to use. It's uh, it's got a, a better range if you like. And and once again, I link it back into the Octavator side, so I can not just run the saw but the pulse output on it. Um, create sub octaves. So it's it's a direct replacement for what was in there. I haven't even changed the front panel in any way, just, just replaced the circuit. Um, but I've got a lot more um, control over the, the CV signal. Um, so yeah, we'll go over to the computer. We'll have a look at where I got the circuit from. I'll show you how I built, built my circuit, the strip board layout and how I put it all together. And then we'll come back to the synth and we'll, um, I'll give you a short demo. Although, if you heard the intro music at the beginning, you've got a bit of an idea of things to come. Right, let's go over to the computer and have a look at the circuit. The original op amp VCO for the Optivator came from electromusic.com. Um, forum and if I scroll down a little bit then you should recognize this circuit from the first Octivator build um, very very simple and yeah it worked uh, it did the job but it's sim with simplicity comes limitations and I always felt that I could do a little bit more with this um, so I started looking around for, I suppose, a kind of an upgrade, if you like, uh, over this very simple design. Like I say, for a simple design, I'm not knocking the design at all. It's great. It works. If you want to build it, build it. No problem at all. If you want to kind of go a little bit further, there's there's loads of discussion on here, loads of ideas and people sharing other circuits and... Uh, various things as strip boards like I couldn't get that one to work properly actually. Um but if you go right down to the bottom here this last post on this particular page is somebody called Casu um based in it says here Helsinki. Um and this is it should look fairly familiar so it's it's a, a variation on the theme of the op amp saw wave vco now if i click on it it'll enlarge it so we can see we've got the two op amps we've got uh, the saw output here and a pulse output here the key thing about this circuit is to start with we've got this what's labeled frequency offset trimmer pot here now what you use that, but the way you do that is you you set up the uh, the lowest frequency for the oscillator by adjusting this potentiometer. Then the other that's this this is the the frequency pot that you see on the front panel eventually, and then the other thing that that we've got down here is this one k trim pot for CV scaling. Now in the description. Uh, so if we go back in, in the description here, it doesn't claim to be fully 1 volt per octave, but it does seem to try reasonably well over, say, 2, pushing it a bit, maybe 3 octaves if you take a bit of time setting it up. And it's not that difficult to set up, really. You set, you set, the, uh, set the lowest frequency here, and then kind of play a a scale and keep trimming this until you uh, until it all sounds in tune. I'll show you how I did that in a while. Um, so 
yeah, that's that's a circuit. Like I say, a castle. I'd not come across castle before, so I did a little bit more hunting round. And if you want to find out more, this is uh, his blog, and it's a synthesizer DIY and other sound electronics. And there's a whole range of projects on here, um, and there's there's a nice kind of list here of popular posts. And scroll, scroll, scroll it at the top. You've got modules. It's even got a, a store, um, so you, you can actually buy circuit boards and things. Um, so yeah, go go check him out. Some really good, really useful stuff here. But for now, I'm just really grateful that they shared this particular design on the Electro Music Forum. So yeah, I'll put I'll put the link in the description. But if you just search single op amps or VCO, and then click on the uh, electro music link, you should find it. Okay, so that's where the circuit came from. What we need to do now is have a look at how I put it together. Here we have my strip board layout. So not a lot of components, fairly straightforward um, this one this 10k trimmer here this is the frequency offset so this is the one that you tweak to uh, set the lowest frequency and then this here is the 1k CV trim pot I've used an LM358 you could use a TL072 if you wanted to and then it just has ground and plus 12 volts um, of course on the CV, the pulse and the saw, you also need a connection to earth to go onto your jack sockets, but uh, I'm, I'm taking it that we're already up to speed with that. Um, if not, then you can go and look at some of the uh, some of the other videos which, which go into a little bit more detail on that side of things. Um, and then this that's the pot that um, will go on the um, front panel, which gives the sets the frequency for the oscillator. What does the circuit board look like? Well, here we go. So we've we've got the pot for the front panel for the frequency. Um, we've got the three jack sockets for. Um, we've got uh, pulse saw and this one CV. You can see. I've linked the earths and sent them back to the board there, so that's how you get the earth into your uh, jack sockets. Um, if moving a little bit closer, this is the trim pot for the lowest frequency. So the way I set that up is I turn down the uh, the potentiometer to its lowest setting and then I use this trim pot to tune that to the lowest note that I want it to play and that basically sets sets the bottom of the range for the VCO. Then connecting it to um, something with a 1 volt per octave output um, I use a key step for this uh, and then play a, a scale on the key step and then this is a it's a multi-turn trim pot this is a 1k multi-turn trim pot which is the cv trimmer um cv tracking trimmer uh, and basically just just keep trimming this until your scale plays in tune and that's it it's pretty much set up so still I think a very simple circuit but this design should give us and does in fact give us um, a lot more precise control over the uh, frequency CV so let's go and have a listen to what it sounds like in action here we are uh, a lot closer in though this is the Octivator module it's a quick rundown of reminder of what the controls are so there's a pitch control 
which obviously is the picture of the VCO. There's a saw wave output and a pulse wave output, and then this one is a CV input. Now, the pulse output is connected to the input of the activator, provided there is nothing plugged into the activator. If you plug something in, into the in socket on the activator, then these two will operate as separate entities. Um, but in this configuration, with nothing plugged in there, then the pulse is automatically fed to the input on the activator, and then there's an output of the activator. Now what the activator part of it does is it takes the pulse input signal and then it will generate a copy of that pulse in that pulse input signal plus three octaves, the first three octaves below whatever the pulse frequency is. Okay, so that's it's a very quick rundown. If you want a, a lot more detail, then you can you can look at the uh, Octivator build video. Um, but for now, what we'll do, we'll pull out. I'll talk you through what look. You're going to see a small part of this. I'll talk you through what the rest of the patch is, and then we'll um, we'll play around with a few sounds. I'll start by talking through the patch that I've set up here. So if you look at the panel. Um, this is the activator with the um, VCO at the top. So the saw wave out of the VCO is going into a virtual VCA. The output from the virtual VCA is going down to the mixer. The CV input on the VCO is coming from the key step controller. The Output from the activator is going to the input on a low pass gate. Now remember what I've just said that because I've got nothing plugged on the input of the activator, the pulse output is automatically connected internally to that. So that the pulse is feeding the activator and then the output from the activator is going into another channel on the mixer. And I'm kicking things over. Um, the uh, the gate out from the key step is going into the gate buffer, which allows me to split it so I can put one signal to the CV on the out low pass gate and one going up to the CV on the Vactrol. So there's no envelopes um, on this, it's just literally the when I hit the key, it opens the gate, which triggers the Vactrol or the LPG. That's it, it's on off. Okay, right, so that's the general um, layout. And then, of course, the output from the mixer, uh, the Project 12 mixer, is going into my audio mixer, which I'm using for the mic and, and recording this on the video and everything else. Um, so, as we've got it set up, um, we are just getting the output from the saw wave. So, here we go. Now you can hear the tracking stays really, really well up to you know a kind of a that's pretty good. If, if you try and push it over too many octaves, it it, it will drift. Plus, like a lot of these uh, analog systems, you have to give it chance to warm up. Um, but yeah, you know it's um, kind of. Fluff the keys a bit there, but never mind. But hey, <clears throat> you know, and I, I can I can kind of drop an octave on the like, thing. Yeah, it gets a bit flaky at times. Yeah, enough of that. Anyway, 
that's kind of just the, the straight saw. What I can do, if I can bring in a bit of the uh, Octavator, So you can see now we've we've getting this kind of it's it's fattening it out with kind of it's almost like footage, extra footage pipes on an organ. Talking of which, let's dial in a little bit of reverb. Oh, we could be in a cathedral. Like I say, um, you don't always oh, be moving the mic. You don't always get um, perfect key tracking over the full range. But as I said when I was showing the circuit, and as, as the you know Castle designed the circuit, says it's not designed to be uh, you know a, a fully one volt per octave exponential tracking over all octaves. But it's over, say, a couple of octaves, it does tend to track reasonably well, and for most purposes, that's perfectly adequate. But for me, I think it's a really good, really useful upgrade to the Octivator. And uh, yeah, hey, I've, I've got, got myself a uh, DIY, DIY modular uh, church organ.